Hey guys, how's it going? It's me, Moadi. I wanted to just to come out really quickly um, and talk about the importance of setting boundaries. And there's a key that I think sometimes we miss when we talk about boundary setting. By now, we all have heard that you know people treat us the way we teach them to treat us and that we're responsible for creating parameters and making sure that people abide by them and holding them accountable when they don't. What I've discovered, though, is that one of the reasons why this is such a challenge for many people is because the person that's been offended sometimes doesn't feel comfortable with watching the other person be uncomfortable. And we they don't often give that other person the opportunity to really sit and experience the full brunt, the full consequences of their behaviors before they're ready to start apologizing and accepting apologies and trying to gloss, thing, gloss things over. And what I know to be true is that when you don't give that offending person, that other person, ample time to sit in the mess that they created and to really start to experience the full brunt of their consequences, they are not inspired to change. And that behavior will repeat itself. You have to get to the space if you really want people to respect your boundaries where you're comfortable with them being uncomfortable, where you're comfortable with them having to feel the impact of maybe not being allowed to be in your space and not being allowed to have your attention. But when we're not willing to let them sit in the mess that they've created, then what happens is, again, there's no incentive to change and the patterns continue. A couple of years back, my now seven-year-old nephew, I think he was five or six at the time, um, we were hanging out in the living room in D.C. and he was jumping on the couch. And I have this thing, and I told him, stop jumping on the couch. Now, if your parents are here, you can jump on the couch, do whatever you want. But when I'm here by myself, you're not jumping on this couch because if something happens to you, I'm responsible. That's what I'm thinking in my head. So I said, stop jumping on the couch. And he looks at me with this big grin on his face and he keeps jumping. I told him two good times. I said, Yanga, you got one more good time. And he stopped jumping on that couch. Kept jumping. And I knew he wasn't trying to be malicious because he had a big, he was being really playful and stuff. But you have to learn that when you're given a directive from Auntie Wadi, you've got to fall in line, right? So he's jumping, smiling. I said, okay, so since you're still jumping after I told you twice not to, that's telling me that we're now not listening to each other and we're not going to speak, to, we're not speaking to each other, we're not listening to each other, we're not respecting each other, right? And he goes, why well, he's still jumping. I said, okay, cool. Just so you understand, what I'm seeing is you're not speaking to me, you're not listening to me, I'm going to do the same because that's how we do things, right? So he keeps jumping. He jumped on that couch for another two, three, four minutes. Ultimately, he got tired. He plops himself down and said, I think, Marley, what do you want to do now? I got my eyes on the TV because I'm watching Gumball. And I didn't respond to him. And he asked me a couple more times. I didn't respond. Then he said, I tap on my foot. And I didn't respond. He thought it was a joke. So he goes upstairs because he's tired. Then he comes back downstairs. I am asking, do you want to play Uno? I got my eye on the TV. Now I had changed it. Now I'm watching Columbo. Auntie Mwadi, Auntie Mwadi, you want to play Uno? And I'm steady, making no eye contact, looking in front of the TV. That's it. He goes back upstairs. Then I can hear his sister, his older sister goes upstairs for some reason, and I can hear the conversation. Auntie Mwadi's not talking to me. Well, what did you do? I don't know, but she, she's not speaking to me. She said, he said, really? Well, what did you do? Well, she, I was jumping on the couch, and, and she told me to stop, but I, but I was just jumping on the couch, but now she's not speaking to me. So, well, I think you should go downstairs and say sorry. That comes downstairs, taps me on my foot. Auntie Marty, I'm watching this TV like it's going out of style, right? And in my heart, you know, there was a part of me that was like, oh, my little boo thing, I know he's sad. But I said to myself, oh, no. What they say about writing checks that your backside can't cash. I said, we're in this, we're in this for good. So he goes back upstairs because I'm ignoring him. Then the boo-hooing starts. The sister goes back upstairs, and then she comes downstairs, and then she tries to advocate for him. She's a really good big sister. So I said, Marty, I think he gets it. Da, 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 da. I think he's really ready to apologize now. I said, do you really think he understands what he did? She said, yeah. I said, okay, send him downstairs. So she goes upstairs, and I can hear him talking, and he comes downstairs. Face hanging down, lip to the ground, sits next to me. Auntie Marty, I just want to... Just say that I'm really, really sorry for, for, for not listening. Tears flowing and everything's carrying on. And inside I'm dying. 
Like my heart is breaking because I'm like, this is my boo thing. I don't want to see him suffer. But at the same time, you're going to learn that there are consequences for your behavior. So he's boohooing and crying and carrying on. I turn off the TV. I sit up. I turn up and look in the face. I said, well, are you really sorry? Yes, Auntie Marty. I said, are we going to have this problem again? He said, no, Auntie Marty. And I went through the whole thing again. I said, I respect you. You respect me. I listen to you. You listen to me. When we get to this place where you're not listening, where there's no respect, you know, that doesn't work. That's not how we do things in this family. I do you understand. Yes, Auntie Marty. So that was like a year and a half. You haven't had that problem since. And it's interesting because his older sister, not the one who helped him, but that other one, she tried that too. One, one good time. Same treatment. Haven't had that issue since. My point is this. These two kids that I'm talking about, they're like my ribs. I would do anything for these children. At the same time, though, there's a way that you're going to treat me and there's a way you're not going to treat me. And I don't care who you are. I don't care how much I love you. I don't care how much you mean to me. When you cross a boundary and I let you know it and you continue to cross it, you are going to ex experience the absence of my presence. Period. Bottom line. It doesn't always feel good to me. It makes me feel uncomfortable. It might make me sad, but I have to stand my ground because if I don't, then you're going to continuously, just continuously and repeatedly cross a boundary and then I'm going to be mad. So my point is very simple. When you are dealing with people who disrespect you and cross the line and you have made them aware of it, you have got to stand 10 toes to the ground in the knowledge that it is your responsibility to uphold that boundary and let them feel the impact of your absence. Let them feel, let them sit in the consequences of their behavior. Let them feel the full brunt of what it is that they did before you jump the line and start, you know, accepting apologies and, and, you know, just trying to gloss things over because you're not comfortable or you don't want to see them upset and you don't want to see them hurt. When I think about my priorities, my health and wellness and my mental state, that's my top priority over everybody and everything on this planet. Now, I might from time to time make the decision to sacrifice some sleep to support somebody and to go the extra mile, but I do that by choice. That's my choice. But nine times out of ten, my mental health my peace of mind, my boundaries, those are my top priorities. And if you are in my life, if you are my friend, if you are my family, if you are an associate, and you cross those boundaries, and I've made it clear to you that there are consequences for those boundaries, I'm going to uphold them. I don't care how uncomfortable you get. I don't care how uncomfortable I get because the higher purpose for me is my mental health. The higher goal for myself is to make sure that I have peace of mind and that I'm not disrespected. And that I'm not in these relationships with people who have been told the rules that must be followed for access to my life and choose to continuously disregard them. Because after a while, it's not on them, it's on me. So it's not on them, it's on you. So you've got to get to the space where you are comfortable with other people around you being uncomfortable for as long as it takes for them to really experience the full brunt of the consequences of what they have done to you. Because only then will they be inspired to make a change. Like I said, with my nephew, that was a couple years ago. We haven't had that problem since. Niece, same thing. One time, when they were little, one good time. People who are in my circle, they know there's certain things that if you cross the line, you are out. You don't even get it. It doesn't even come up for a vote. It's just done. It's a wrap. So they're mindful and they're careful. And I don't have a problem being around people who are uncomfortable. And I don't have a problem being uncomfortable around people who have crossed my boundaries. And I've now had to have that tough conversation with them to cut them loose. Or, you know, fire a couple of warning shots in the air. So, that's it. If you're having challenges with people in your life who are repeatedly, repeatedly disrespecting you, crossing the line, etc. Ask yourself, are you so quick to jump to that good space, so quick to go into that space of forgiveness that you miss out on the opportunity for them to feel the brunt of the consequences of the behavior. Because if you are doing that, if you're so quick to forgive and so quick to overlook, you are doing yourself a disservice, okay? Your boundaries are yours. They're your responsibility to uphold. And whether people like it or not, that's not your problem. If people get uncomfortable, let them get uncomfortable because maybe they will be so uncomfortable that they change. But if they don't change, at least you'll know where your boundaries are and you can keep them at bay. Okay? 
that's it. That's all I wanted to share. Hope you all are doing well. I have a little bit of a cold, so I'm hoping to feel better in the next couple of days. All right? Y'all have a good night, good day, wherever you are. I hope that you're doing well, and I'll see you soon. Bye.